All right, welcome. So this is our monthly Leadership Academy. I'm really glad to see you here. Um, and I appreciate you guys um, putting that, that time on your calendar. And I respect how a lot of you are looking to grow and looking to probably increase your, your potential and your influence as a leader. And I would love to um, encourage you to come on camera so I can see you and feel your energy. I also want to uh, encourage you to participate, ask questions, and uh, collaborate with me over the course of today's session. So I'm just curious uh, if, if some of you could tell me why you're here. What is it that intrigues you or interests you about this leadership group or, or, or meeting? And what exactly is it that you're looking to get out of today uh, specifically? So who would like to share? Don't be shy. Um, let's see, I'll go ahead and talk. Hi there, how are you Nina? Good to see you. Thanks, nice to see you too. So um, I, um, I, don't, I have no preconceived ideas. I saw, I saw this and um, I'm thinking about, I used to teach yoga, I've got a 500 hour certification. I'm thinking about starting that again and going down a little bit more of the health and wellness um, world. I have, a, there, I, just, I have a lot of education and know-how and I feel like I'd like to give back to society in that way. Um, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just really curious. Um, and then also how, I, I'm just curious. So that's why I'm here. Okay, I love that. Curiosity is fabulous because when we are curious, we tend to seek out information, and ask more questions. So that's what brought you here. And I think that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Does anybody else wanna share what they're hoping to get out of today or why they might be here? Perspective. Tell me more. Just to see how, you know, where everyone comes from, the troubles they're dealing with and just, you know, the stories and our personal kind of struggles, I think, you know, as leaders, we all have them. So I just like to see other perspectives from the people in the group. Okay. I love that. Yes. You know, struggle is, uh, life is not without struggle. It's not something we intend to have, right? Yet when it shows up, I think we have to ask ourselves, um, you know, how do I, how do I approach the challenge, right? And do I look for opportunities to see it from different perspectives? Am I seeking information? Am I shutting down, right? Because um, like I said, life is not without any struggle, but it is important for us to, to ask ourselves, you know, how do we deal with adversity when it shows up? Thanks for that. All right, anybody else? I think leadership is ever evolving. So you need to continue to grow it in different ways. And any bit of knowledge that I can get, I usually tend to be in there. Good. That's awesome. I love that. All right. So I think we're going to, you're going to be happy for a, a, a lot of you who are sharing why you're here um, today. I want to talk to you um, you know, I think we, when we talk about leadership, we know that leadership is influence, right? If, if you don't, if you haven't heard that before and you're taking notes, I would definitely encourage you to write that down. Leadership is about influence and nothing will probably move you further in your career than your ability to lead others and your ability to influence others. And that's not about bossing people around, right? It's not about managing. It's about how you connect and how you understand where the other person is coming from and what they need. And I, I think the highest paid people in the world are people who bring value to an organization or to, to any given situation. And how do you bring value? you connect, you solve problems, you understand what the other person needs, right? And you fulfill a need. And so it sounds a lot like the sales cycle, right? Sounds a lot like what we are dealing with daily. And I think that your leadership ability and the, the way that you can you know, influence other people um, has to start with yourself. And I think that if we hope to grow a business, 
grow an organization, develop other people, if we want to be successful in um, our sales conversations and create winning outcomes, right, win the deal, uh, then we have to take a look at, are we really spending enough time understanding what makes us tick? Are we spending enough time on understanding our own behavior and developing ourselves personally, right? Because the more you grow personally, the more that you're going to be able to impact others. So we had, I don't know if it was our last Leadership Academy or the one before it, but you can find all the recordings on our uh, face, our OP updates page on my YouTube channel. I believe it could be on the Market Center's YouTube channel. If you can't find it, just reach out to me. A Gibbs to at KW and I'll, I'll get you the recordings. Um, we really pulled this concept apart and talked about developing ourselves and, and growing our own leadership. Uh, today, I wanna go in a little bit more granule and I wanna say that one aspect of that is understanding our behavior, right? Because if you're gonna be an effective leader uh, and if you're gonna grow a business, any business, then you're going to be connecting with people or you're going to be involving people in the quest. And so understanding people's behavior is key to relating with them, right? But if we, can, if we can't understand our own behavior profile, could we be operating with some blinders on, right? So understanding our own behavior profile, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? Um, how do we approach conflict, like Stephen was saying before, challenges show up, right? So how do we approach challenge? How do we approach conflict? Um, and, you know, how do we process information? That can be really valuable. So what are some ways that you can really understand your own behavior profile and, and really put that into, into work for yourself? Any thoughts on that? You can ask your friends, your circle, <laughs> you can find out what they think about you. You could, you could ask your friends. Now, what are some, some of the pros and cons to that? There's probably going to be some bias there. There might be some bias, right? So because everyone's going to see you in a different light, um, depending on the level of relationship you have with that individual, they may come at it from a different perspective. Um, it could be their opinion. It could be the way you showed up on a certain day that's stuck in their head, right? Um, and what else could be a pro or a con to that? Well, depending on who the person is, they could be either overly critical or a little too um, vanilla in their assessment, right? Because they don't want to offend you. Uh, you need someone who can really give you some, some good feedback, right? Um, so it's not a bad idea. It's just, it's one way that you could certainly, um, you know, get some perspective because the benefit when you ask other people is they can give you the benefit of, of some information about how you show up in front of other people. Um, so for instance, have you ever met someone where the, what we say is the audio and the video don't match? They say they are this one, they say they describe themselves in one way and then the way that they behave is completely different, right? So there's a, a misalignment there, right? So um, that, that could be, you know, when you ask other people to share some, some, some feedback with you around your leadership ability or how, and I would probably get more specific with them. Like, you know, talk to me about my communication skills or talk to me about my uh, assertiveness or talk to me about uh, how you see um, me interact in a group, right? Like you'd probably have to give them something specific to, to weigh in on. Um, the value in that is that you might think you show up in a certain way and the feedback might reveal something different or the feedback might reveal how it changes depending on who's around you, right? Because sometimes different behavior profiles around you bring out different aspects of your own behavior. So, so a, a, good, a good suggestion there, Stephen, I just wouldn't stop there. So what else could you do to really connect with and understand and identify more of your behavior profile, your strengths and weaknesses? Self-assessments. Say it again. 
self-assessments? Yes, there are many assessments that you can take. And what I love about the assessment is that if you are really focused on that assessment when you're taking it, right, it's something that you need to time block a little quiet time for, um, not something you're going to do while you're doing something else. Uh, and it's not something you want to start and stop. You just need to really like get into the zone. And if you're just really being your authentic self, these assessments are pretty scary true. They're pretty accurate. They're like, you know, usually 95 to 99% accurate. And there are several. Now, one of which I'd love to offer all of you, if you haven't done this yet, is to take the um, Keller Williams Behavior Assessment known as the KPA. And uh, that is a, a wonderful tool that will really help you look at 11 key behavior characteristics. There are thinking characteristics, then there are also behavior characteristics interacting with people. Um, and the KPA process is not complete unless you have someone verify it with you. Right, so that's where I come in. I can verify that KPA for you. And that can, pro that can provide you with a lot of information about you and your strengths and how you use them at a high level. Um, now, the, the KPA, what I also like about the KPA is that it will also show us where you could direct your career in the Keller Williams universe and what you could do successfully at a very high level with little stress. So in other words, it gives us a job fit report of, of positions within the world of real estate sales. It, it also lists positions in the market center leadership team, as well as positions within Keller Williams International. So if you are thinking that um, you definitely want career development and you want opportunity to grow and you want to kind of create a roadmap for that and know what your options might be, then I would highly suggest that you reach out to me and uh, ask about taking the KPA and then we'll set up some time for, for me to verify it with you. And I'm going to ask some people who have done that process with me or even someone else. Uh, to share what the experience was like, uh, not just taking the KPA, but then having, having me verify it with you. What was that like for you? What did you learn? What was the benefit? Is it a free assessment? It is free, absolutely. So if you email me, I will make sure you get the uh, link to take it. So who think, wants to share? Go ahead, Kenna. Hey, um, I've shared this with you that I have taken and also verified other people's KPAs many times. And it still to me is so interesting when you do it with somebody new, right? Because everybody's perspective is different and it really makes you kind of search to the core of your intentions and what you want and just how you operate. Um, and it just helps bring to light if what you're doing is in line with who you are and what you truly want out of life and where you could be the, like have the biggest impact. Yes. Thank you for that. I think in, um, and I want to hear from anyone else who'd like to share, but I, I know from getting feedback from other people over the last several years that I've um, used the KPA, there are times and I've seen it, right? I love as a coach, I wait for the aha moment. Um, when we go through the KPA verification process and there, there are sometimes we can take something at face value and we connect a certain meaning to it. And then I have the ability to pull it apart with you and unpack it. And you understand that it has a different meaning, which you might connect with on a deeper level or see it in, in a way that really is an underutilized tool in your own toolbox. And that's the power of KPA verif a verification period, right? Because any of the assessments that you take it would be really, really great if you had someone who could verify it with you. Um, so, so that's the KPA. Another one that I can, so the next two I can offer you, um, and I'm only going to share these three because I, I, can, I can verify them with you. There are several others that you can take um, that are out there, like Myers-Briggs and things like that. Um, so other than the KPA, I would highly rec recommend the DISC, D-I-S-C profile uh, for you to take as an assessment. Again, if you send me an email, I can send you the instructions for taking the DISC. We, um, 
we subscribe to um, a company, uh, the name of the company is Abelson Group. And what I love about their DISC product is that it will give you an assessment of your leadership skills and it also runs a separate report for your sales skills. And so that could be very helpful for you. And um, what the DISC assessment does is it verifies four key behavior traits. And the DISC is an acronym for, um, the, the D is um, basically, uh, it assesses your decision-making process, okay? And, and another thing I will say, I'm gonna interrupt myself and say this as a disclaimer, all the assessments that you take should never make you feel like you're doing anything wrong. Your results are unique to you, and it's not a matter of right or wrong. It's, it's about how you are showing up or how you might measure your behavior on a certain like spectrum, right? So it's what, whether your behavior falls to the left, to the right. And so in other words, with the DISC profile, you know, someone with a high D is not any more successful than someone with a low D. It just means that you approach things differently, right? So, so the D referring to decision-making, someone with a very high D is going to be very quick to make decisions. They probably um, are using their intuition more than anything and, and relying on what they've learned from past experiences and they're fast paced. Other behavior traits that, that correlate with a high D, very bottom line oriented, tend to be you know, the leader, tend to be an influencer, uh, tend to be naturally um, uh, driven to, to lead projects and get results and big vision thinking and things like that. Versus someone with a low D is much more analytical, much more methodical. They approach decision-making in a, in a slower, more, um, you know, um, slower, more step-by-step um, -step process. They tend to be solid team players. They tend to be uh, strategists, right? Not quite the visionary, but more the details person. So you see, neither one of them is good versus bad. It's just depending on you know, who you are to an organization or the position you might have within some type of team, is, is it better, uh, is, it, is, is, is your high or low D a better fit for that? Because you would be able to execute what that role needs at a high level with little stress, okay? So that's the D is decision-making. The I relates to people and how influential you are with people. Uh, so someone with a very high I is very outgoing, very gregarious, very charismatic, very high energy, find success through people. They have like a high attraction factor. Someone with a low I is much more reserved, much more introspective, um, much more um, kind of sit back, take it all in type of person. Um, and then of course, there's all the space in the middle of all of these, uh, of these four characteristics, right? So you might be somewhere in the middle. Uh, the S is stabilization. So someone who is a high S, very slow, very steady, very methodical in their approach to things, very systems oriented, uh, very detail oriented, um, very much about creating as, as much as implementing systems or someone with a low S um, is, is going to be much more of a freelancer, uh, not, you know, they may appreciate the systems, but they're not necessarily going to follow it. <laughs> if they believe that they can get to the outcome without it, they're all about it, right? So I can go on and on. And then the C is compliance, uh, basically how you see the world through the lens of rules or standards, right? So someone with a high C, very rule oriented, very high standards. Um, if it is not, if, if that is what they say you should do, then that is how you do it, exactly how you do it. Um, and are probably um, uh, not going to be risk takers um, versus someone with a low C, comfortable with risk, comfortable with, uh, you know, trying different things and seeing what sticks. Uh, it's not that they don't respect rules, but it's kind of like the rule is the advisement, not necessarily scripture, you know, that kind of thing. And then of course, all the gray space in between. So when you look at that, 
profile, the disk profile, it can reveal a lot about the way we respond, the way we think, the way we behave. Um, and again, it is never about making you feel like your particular behavior profile is, is wrong. It's just understanding more uh, about yourself and what that can reveal to you, right? And so the third um, assessment that I would like to focus on today and share with you is uh, something called the VIA characteristic, VIA. And um, the, this is another tool that if you're interested in having me go over with you, I, I'm happy to do it. Um, what the VIA assessment does is it really, um, I think the actual name is VIA character assessment, uh, is, is it looks at your character, it looks at your values, it looks at, you know, a lot of those things that really define how you tick, um, how you think, how you act, you know, what is that inner, inner compass? So in doing that, it does also reveal your strengths and it just, it becomes, I think, more of an understanding about those deeper seated, uh, deeper rooted, you know, values that, that you really, I think our beliefs and our values become the rules that we live by, right? So it can give you, a, I think, a deeper level of understanding about why you respond to certain things um, over others and, and you know, how you can look at your level of confidence, your happiness, reducing stress, how you accomplish goals, right? A lot of people who are really looking to define their next level or their um, meaning and purpose would get a lot of information out of the VIA uh, character strength assessment. So that all, all three of these are free and uh, all three of these assessments I'm very familiar with and very comfortable in, in verifying the results with you. So what questions do you have about any of those three or about why you should take an assessment? Because, you know, again, uh, that's really the core of what I wanted to go over with you today is how this is a really important part of your leadership development. Any thoughts or questions on that? No, I'm looking forward to taking them and uh, hanging out with you and going over them. Good. I look forward to hearing from you, Nina, on it because I think it can be really a huge, um, a huge asset to you to, to know that. Look, at the end of the day, our greatest asset is ourselves, right? And so the more we understand why we do what we do, I think what, what comes from that is really working at a higher level. And, you know, I have learned, I'm at a point in my life where I'm not going to make any excuses nor apologize for what I'm good at versus what I'm not good at, right? And I've learned that I don't need to worry too much about what I'm not good at. I just need to surround myself with other people who, who have that in their strength zone, right? So that's another reason why this is so important is because once you, you go through this process for yourself, like for instance, any of you who are looking to build a team with us at Keller Williams, I would want you to build your team using these types of tools as you're meeting people. I mean, that's how we hire in our organization. You know, we're, we're hiring people that, you know, really can can fit into the organization in a way that allows them to use their strength zones. And we want to build a team that complements each other, right? Because what is one of the, one of the um, dangers of hiring all of the same types of people in your organization or people who tend to think the same way? What are some of the challenges with that? You don't have new ideas or people to challenge each other. Right. There's no... 
Yeah, because there's no critical thinking, right? There's no one there to say, well, what if we did it this way, right? Or when you're stuck because you're you're thinking of it in one linear way based on the way you would approach the problem, you need someone else to come in and say, you know, like I'm a visionary, right? That's who I am. Uh, my, my disc profile, I'm a very high D and a high I. So I find success through other people. I'm a big thinker, a visionary, I'm fast paced. I make decisions quick. I use my gut. I use my past experience. I can assess the situation pretty quickly and behave, you know, people's behaviors. Um, yet when it comes to the systems and the details, eh, I'm smart. And see, here's the other thing that we often realize I'm smart enough to do it. This has nothing to do with intelligence. It's just not my preferred behavior profile for me to slow down. Right. And to get into the detail conversation and pull it all out, like I can do it, but it's going to take a lot of discipline. And I would rather just have someone like Erin on my team, who is a high I, but she also has a high S and C. So, you know, we connect because of the eyes, but she, and she can work well with everybody on our team, but she's the one who can slow it down a little bit and say, wait a minute, let me just get out a spreadsheet. Let me make a spreadsheet for this. Right. I mean, that's our little inside joke. Let me make a spreadsheet and figure, let me put all the information in the spreadsheet. Now we can look at it. And now I, I, I have an answer for you where I'm just like all over the place. Right. I'm just going to the next big thing. So that, yeah. So Aaron's like, I love a good spreadsheet. Right. So, so those are some of the things that um, when we're looking at, you know, our leadership, you have, you have to know that that means other people are part of your journey. Right. Like, I appreciate everyone's, you know, coming in here once a month at one o'clock. It's the middle of your day. Um, I'm going to continue to ask you a lot of questions and encourage you to come on camera and share things because leaders are not quiet people, right? So you have to make sure you you are also audio and video are matching, right? If you want to grow and you want to up your leadership game, you have to show up and want to connect and collaborate and communicate and ask questions. Um, and you're going to know that leaders are finding success through other people because leadership is all that influence. So if you don't have other people around you, then are you leading, right? And so we might possess some great qualities and strengths, but if we're not using them, and if we're not putting our influence to, to work for us, are we really leading? Are we really growing our leadership? So all of this, you know, understanding how your behavior profile is working for you should also then naturally lead you to want to be curious about how other people's behavior profiles work for them. And imagine if we had the time to really sit down with every potential client or for our, our you know, leadership team, or our staff to be able to you know, give every single one of you the assessment or read it before they have their first meeting with you in a perfect world, that would be great because we would gain so much insight as to how that person thinks, communicates, right? How we win with them, because then we can really get into the whole mirror matching in our consulting and in our conversations. Um, but I do believe that as you use these assessments and you understand more about what they're evaluating and how your behavior profile uh, unfolds, you will learn how to recognize certain things in other people as well, right? Um, so any other thoughts or questions on assessment tools, understanding more of your strengths? You know, as a coach, I am always working to help people, I think, develop more of their strengths, not to overcome you know, weaknesses or get better at weaknesses. I think your weaknesses are naturally your weaknesses for a reason. And if we could put more energy into developing our strengths, I think that gives us the bigger advantage. And I think that that gives us the opportunity to, to go from good to great. So, so that would be uh, my, my, my coaching for you today on that. All right. Anything else today? Today's a short one. All right, so who's gonna take the KPA? I wanna see in the chat, who wants to take the KPA? Who's interested in the disc? Who's interested in the VIA character? Who wants to take all three? Just tell me in the chat what your goal is and what your action is from, from being here today. And how do we find out the results? Because I took one that was sent to me when I started. What did you take, the KPA? 
for agents, yeah. So uh, which market center are you in? Uh, 694. Okay, so I would go back to Meralda. Are you in coaching with Meralda? Yeah. Oh, perfect. So I would go back to Meralda and ask her if she has the results. If she's comfortable going through that KPA assessment with you, that'd be great. If not, you know, send me an email and you can set up an appointment with me as well. Um, okay. But we have a database of all the assessments, so we'll be able to get you a copy. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right, so start you. with Meralda, and if if I can help, let me know. Okay, I will. And then again, if you're interested in the DISC or the VIA character assessment, um, just let me know. Oh, Katie's never taken the VIA. Oh, you'll okay. you'll get. So the one thing about the VIA assessment, um, that one. I believe you have to make sure you download the report um, because I won't get a copy of that one. So Is that the emotional one? Like the. Yeah, so it, yeah it, it's a character assessment. So it goes deeper into, you know, how um, your values, your beliefs, how that plays out. Um, it does go into a little bit about how you respond emotionally to things, which is not good or bad. It just is right. Our, our emotions are just a result of how we're thinking, right? So if do you're thinking happy thoughts, you're going to feel happy. Do we do that? Um, in the ALC, the VA, VIA one. I think I did do that with you guys once. And, uh, it's also something I did in the course I taught, back in January, um, Life by Design. So yeah, I, um, I can, put the, the, I can put the link in the chat. Just give me one second. Where can we learn how to validate and um, read the disc better? So uh, that's a great question. There are several places that will actually certify you. Um, I do, I've, I've used the disc assessment for I'm probably 15 years at least. I used it way before I started here at Keller Williams as a tool for hiring and then when I became a coach. Um, so I, I do have a certification in that, but um, you can get certified through the Abelson Group, uh, which is the company that we use for the DISC. I, the John Maxwell company also offers certification. I just don't know if you have to be a certified coach with them first. Uh, or not, um, but um, there's several. And, and I'm sure, listen, at the end of the day, Google's your best friend, right? Now, just because someone puts out a video or blog or a website that says, here's how you understand the, the disk profile may or may not be you know, the best resource. So you have to scrutinize a little bit in any case and anything you're looking for scrutinize you know, the information that you're getting. I'm happy to look at something with you if you have questions, but, you know, I'm actually glad you brought up that question, Rebecca. So while we still have everyone on, on the line, you know, as you're looking to grow in your leadership, at some point, many of you want to be on the other side of these assessments, right? So I, I love taking assessments for my own, you know, to be introspective and to understand more about myself and for my own personal growth and development. Yet most of the time I'm on the other side as a coach or consultant, right? As a leader, providing people with the opportunity to take the assessment and then review the results with them. So you may want to develop your ability uh, to be that consultant. So if you are looking to grow a team, if you're looking to be a part of our leadership team, or you have interest in, you know, joining any, any part of our staff, reach out to me, let me know. Um, but if you want to understand the KPA at a high level and be able to verify it for other people, then you want to take career visioning, which is a Keller Williams course that actually is an entire course all on how to hire identify, hire, recruit, and retain talent. And um, it is our hiring process. And I, I think it's a phenomenal process. And uh, it, is, it is a thorough process, right? So um, it, in most people, if not everyone who's ever gone through the career visioning process with me over the years has said like they've never had such a thorough interview in their life. Um, and even, even within our own staff, um, there are, there are a lot of, there's a lot of talent in our staff, and I'm sure you would agree across our four market centers and many of which want and are eager to have leadership opportunities and to grow with us. 
and it's it's still putting them through the same career visioning process they went through when they were hired you know because we want to know we want to know it's a win-win and so I not only do I want to know if I give that person an opportunity that it's going to be a good thing for the company, I want to know it's a good thing for them. I want to know they're ready for it, right? And so through the whole career visioning process, we can learn a lot about where they are at any given moment, right? Because who they were when we hired them two years ago might not be who they are today. And, you know, it gives us a lot, it gives them also a lot of information around, you know, where they might need to sharpen their own tools. So it's, it's a great process. So that's how you would learn how to verify the KPA, because that's, that's the first part of the career visioning process. And um, the VIA, um, probably if you go on their website, you can learn a little something about you know, how to be on the back end of that. Um, I, it's just a tool I've used for a long time. So I don't have any formal education or um, uh, certification in that tool specifically, but I am, you know, I, I'm a coach and have a lot of education and certifications around coaching. So I come at it through, you know, through that lens and using my tools there. So that was a good question, Rebecca. Thank you. Any other thoughts or comments uh, on the topic that we went through today? Was this helpful to you? It should be because you know you are your greatest asset, like I said. And so understanding more about how you can evolve and how you can develop some critical thinking and the way that you relate to people. You know, the leader I am today is so very different than the leader I was 10 years ago and still vastly different than the leader I was five years ago and more evolved than I was a year ago. So, but, but growth doesn't just happen accidentally. It, it has to be intentional. And so these tools really open up the conversation and allow you, you know, to, to take a time out and, and really understand why you might do what you do. It'll reveal, I think, sometimes the, the blind spots you have and why you find that you hit that brick wall on certain things because it's clearly not in your wheelhouse, not a strength. So it's really enlightening. So I encourage you to, to really, as part of your leadership journey, to take the time to get into some of these assessments and see what it tells you about yourself. I think it's going to be extremely rewarding. And if I can be a part of that process to help you with that, I would look forward to it. Um, so again, my email is agibbs2 at kw.com. So feel free to reach out. I appreciate you being here. And um, if you want to get connected to the previous recordings, just let me know. I'll make sure you get the links and I'll see you guys next month. All right. Thanks so much Thank for joining you, me. Thank All you. right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.